Here at the Faye Watch Show, we bring you interesting interviews with the most incredible people in our community. And today we celebrate the Outshine Film Festival with the cutie herself, Miss Jennifer Chris. Watch this. I'm super excited about my next guest. You know, it's all about Outshine Film Festival and I've got Jen Chris in bed with me again, all right? And she is just an incredible human and I am happy to call her a friend. Jen Chris is a board director for Outshine Film Festival and she's back in bed with me for a second time. Jennifer is in bed on the Faye Watch Show. <laughs> It's called a two night stand. Ah, is that what it is? That's a what two this night stand. I don't think gay boys have that. Only we have that. Isn't it like the second date? Shouldn't you have brought a U-Haul or something with you? Isn't that what how do you that think works? I got parked outside. Ah! <laughs> I was wondering why there was no freaking parking My out there. That inside. big ass U-Haul. Yeah. <laughs> you know, your cargo shorts are in there. Our Home Depot card is there. Yeah, we're ready. I can't wait to go shopping with you and make this our new home. Honey, have you have you ever gone to Home Depot? That is like an experience. Of course I have. Like that's an experience. And yeah. I know and I know girls who like go and like use it for like hookup kind of deal. Oh, I've never done that. Um, but I will start. I think you yeah. should. No, I'll I mean, start. I or, like Lowe's. I'm more of a Lowe's kind oh, of girl. Oh, you're more of a Lowe's. I got yeah. you. I got you. Do you like girls that like a put stuff together? I can put stuff oh, together. Oh, okay. So then you don't need somebody to do that. I love yeah. that because like those Ikea things, like they just look like they're a different language. Oh wait, because they are in a different language. <laughs> My favorite part is when you put something together and then there's like extra pieces after it's when you think it's completely Yes! Different. It's like, why do I have seven screws left? Like what happened to this? And why is this shit leaning to the left, right? Like right. that always, always yeah. happens. And then you sit on it just. So falls Jen. Apart. Thank you for being in bed with me again. We yeah. had fun last year, right? We talked we about all things women's films and we're going to do the same thing this time. Yes. Um, I, I probably asked you last time, but I can't remember because I have that kind of a memory. How long have you been with Outshine now? Oh my Lord. It's been like 10, 11 years, something really? like that. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mark was still old. Oh, <laughs> no, Mark was very young when we started. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's only, uh, what is it, 27 now or 37 or... 97 I don't or know. something like that yeah you know I, I think that outshine has just gradually aged him matured him in a Very, good way it, I think it's like it actually put him in a little time capsule and he hasn't aged at all and that's why he can never leave mm, because yeah. it will be like the fairies when they're left out of their you know world <laughs> and then they <clears throat> You know, Outshine Film Festival has been around for decades and it's just such an incredible, incredible film festival. And you guys have to know who Mark Gilbert is. He's been around for freaking eons and eons and eons. Um, what is his what, what is his title now? Like aside from you can't go anywhere. Uh, chairman of the board. Wow. Did he give himself that, that title? Yeah. yeah, I think I wanted him to be the secretary and uh, or like director of something. And he was like, no, yeah, chairman no, of the chairman. board. Yeah, and he mm. loves it, and he sits on a chair a lot, so that so it works out. out. Yeah, yeah, and he is a man, and he's boring. So there's the board part, and so oh, chairman I got it. of the board. Got that's, it, that's got how it, we got came it, got up it. With this. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, got it, got it. And so since he's always sitting down, does that mean that Joe has to stand up for most of his tasks? Um, we have everybody standing up around him, mostly <laughs> banning him. But it was, but yeah, no, he's he he does everything though. No. Honestly, Mark is wonderful. He does so much. And you know who really has stepped up to the plate this year is Steve Hunsinger. Mm, so he yes. was big on our board. He was our treasurer. And he and his partner, Roberto, um, are actually the festival management team this year. So we've hired them to do it. And, and we're very excited because they're putting together the whole festival this year. So well, I have been. Different. I have been communicating with Steve. So thank you so much for all your work, honey. Um, I love it. I'm really looking forward to this edition in Miami, baby. Yep. And you know, something that I was looking forward to is is you and being in bed with you because you've got this weird, dry humor that I adore. Like, I just simply adore. But I think you've got to have that kind of humor to be around these crazy guys that you are. Does that help with that? I just, I, I don't know if they know what to do with me, but I just love hanging around with men. And we talked about this before, that we just have a lot of guy friends. Yeah, yeah. And and there's nothing better than just the love that you can get from these amazing, beautiful gay male friends that we have. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't really, you know, put up with much shit. They tell us how it is, yeah. you know, and it's oh. like, don't tell a gay man, like, do I look fat in the, these pants? And they're like, yeah. And your They'll face is kind of messed up, too. You They'll know, shopping <laughs> to exemplify 
how you could look better in something else. That's <laughs> or how take off their own it. pants and go, here, wear these. Yeah. Because yours aren't working. They're still very tight, but we wear them. We wear them. We yeah. wear them. So last year, we were able to spotlight all the women's films in Fort Lauderdale edition yeah. of the Outshine Film Festival. And we're doing it again. It's the Miami edition of the Outshine Film Festival running April 18th through the 28th. Uh, do you have a favorite, Miami or Fort Lauderdale? Miami. For real? Like for yes. real? Yes. Oh, that's hard. But isn't it like picking between like your dogs? Yeah. Well, the thing about Miami is that we get sometimes bigger stars. Mm. It has a little more cachet. It's a little bit it's closer to home. We okay. live closer there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Fort Lauderdale, though, has higher attendance. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, I mean, we just do very, very well in Fort Lauderdale, but it's a bugger to drive up there. I got you. So for me, you know, having to get up there, I feel like I can't quite be as big a part of the Fort Lauderdale Festival as I can in Miami. So I can get a little more of a stamp on the Miami one. Got it. Well, as someone as, as a patron to either one of them, I wouldn't, and I live in Miami, so you would think that I would say, I'm, you know, that I'm favoring the Miami one, but I really don't know just because of that reason, because you guys have such amazing parties, events, themes, yeah. movies that... I, I really couldn't pick one, to be completely honest, you know? But, they're both wonderful. But they're both wonderful, all right? Yeah. Just like your dogs or your kids, you don't have to pick between them. Go to both, all right? So let's begin by talking about some of the women's films. Let's talk about Chuck Chuck Baby, okay? Yes. So Chuck Chuck Baby comes to us from the UK, right? And in this musical dramedy, Helen's boring life at the chicken factory takes a turn when Joanne's return. They were each each other's secret teenage passion. As they fall in love, Helen's zest for life returns, but Joanne faces something darker from her past, featuring the inspiring music of Neil Diamond, Janice Ian, Minnie Ripperton, and a whole lot more. Helen from the home, Joe. She was at school with us. Vaguely. Listen to you. You sound dead posh. Oh, hey, you do. <laughs> Look at your cat. Don't you touch my car. Oh, 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 where did you scamper off to? What the hell's up with you? Do you remember me at school? Eh? Christ, Helen. I'm not being funny, but I was hardly fucking there. Why don't you come out tonight? We're all meeting up with Joanne. You're all right, thanks. We'll more fool you. We'll be at the gasworks from seven. It's that time of the month. Oh, payday, you knobhead. What do you think about Chuck Chuck Baby? Oh, that's going to be a fun night out yeah. at the movies. And it's the first film, you know, that women are all going to show up for. It's on the first Friday. And it's, you know, it's it's a story that we all love, you know, it, it talks about how uh, the two girls were interested in each other when they were younger, but they couldn't quite put their finger on what it was. Mm. And uh, they weren't out yet. They, they didn't know. Exactly. I didn't know what to do with their fingers at that. Time. <laughs> and so much to come with that. And and so, you know, one of them got married and, you know, couldn't have a baby. And, you know, now they're divorced and she feels like she's a failure. Oh, wow. And yet she sees her friend come back and it just reignites a lot of things, you know, builds some passion inside of her. It's it's a classic fun tale uh, with music and dramedy. Dra so it's like a musical it's, then. Yeah, it's, it's like a musical comedy. I love that. I, you'll love it. And it, you know it, that we love musicals everybody's in Everybody's going to love that film. Uh, and, yeah. it and it looks like a fun time. So Chuck yeah. Chuck Baby is coming out Friday, April 19th at 7.20 p.m. at Silver Spot Cinema. I love Silver Spot Cinema. Yes. 
Like it's so Very like modern. Y'all have new. nice big seats. Yeah. And it still smells like a new car. Like, you know, like yeah. I love it. Yeah. You can recline those seats too and take a little nap while you're watching the film. Well, the movies are really interesting though. You won't be napping. Maybe. It can Some happen. people fall asleep at things. It's very uh, soothing. It's true. To see a good comedy. But no, it, you're not going to sleep through these ones. No, no for they're sure. They're very, very good. All for the women's sure. ones. So the next movie that we're going to talk about is actually one of my favorites. One of the ones that I'm really looking forward to seeing. And it's Gondola. Okay. Yes. And it's directed, it's directed by Viet Helmer. And it's from Georgia. Right. And uh, it's a romance. It's quirky. So known for his unique no dialogue style, director Viet Helmer fantastically depicts the love story between two women set in the sky who work on a cable car running through the beautiful mountains of Georgia. <laughs> car connects a village in the mountains with a small town in the valley. Eva starts working at the cable car as an attendant. The cable car has two gondolas. When one gondola goes up, the other goes down. The gondolas meet each other halfway. The attendant of the other gondola is Nino. Eva and Nino meet each other as they drive past every half hour. I mean, I just, there's just something about it that just seems like so like, you know, two ships, pa two gondolas passing, passing in the night, you know, and I see you and you see me and we don't really get to touch or be in each other's space but we constantly see each other yes and there's just some kind of energy between them so it is first of all a film with zero dialogue can you imagine I have can't. you ever seen a film with well, zero dialogue you and me were talking yesterday about castaway remember yes. we were talking yes. about tom hanks and castaway how like it was like half hour and there was no friggin' dialogue yeah. for that long but you were so in the movie that you didn't really notice until yeah. you're like, wait a minute, nobody's freaking talked to me. Well, for a while. remember, he did go, What's up? <laughs> so there was that dialogue. There was that. There was that. But besides that, it was free of dialogue. And this film, it's it's interesting because there's not any dialogue, but occasionally you'll hear somebody go, Ah! <laughs> so it's not like a silent movie, <laughs> but there's just no words. Like, yeah. So it was a very easy script for them to all learn. <laughs> <laughs> but, do you know your lines? Do you know? Yeah, wait, let's run lines. Oh, there are no lines. Okay. So, but it was, um, and they do have, of course, scenes together, but, you know, they first interact by just this overlap. And considering it's a film with no dialogue, you're going to, first of all, feel like you're in an art house film. So you'll feel very, <laughs> excuse me, I'm going to see an art house film. Look at me. Yes. I'm foo, -foo. But it's really good. Mm, okay. So it, it takes you out of your usual experience. Comfort zone, yeah. But it's excellent and it's, you know, it's sexy. I mean, it's, it's beautiful and the women are you know wonderful to watch yes yeah. yes and the trailer itself honestly captivated me you know yeah. and i am someone that has the attention span of a gnat sometimes so i need i thought i needed dialogue right and then when i saw the trailer i was like wait a minute and i was instantly captivated that it instantly became one of the movies that i have to see yeah. so gondola comes out sunday april 21st at 7 20 p.m at silver spot cinema as well Next one is Lesbia, okay? It comes to us from Greece and it's a documentary, right? And it's historical. I'm super interested in this documentary, by the way. So Lesbia chronicles 40 plus years of lesbian identity and conflict between the locals of a small village on the Greek island of Lesbos and lesbians who arrive searching for love, freedom, and community. Lesbians from around the world have been drawn to the island of Lesbos, birthplace of the ancient Greek poet Sappho, when they find paradise in a local village and carve out their own lesbian community tension simmer with the local residents with both groups claiming ownership of the lesbian identity filmmaker Sally Hajimoro Tiru mm -hmm. I don't want to mess up her name but I did a native and lesbian herself is caught in the middle and chronicles 40 plus years of love community conflict and what it means to feel accepted lesbia is a sun-soaked blissfully nostalgic yet impressively complex insight into the stories of lesbos that you have never heard before all women 
from all over the fucking place of the earth. E io andai dal primo vecchietto a dire, do you know where girls here, they stay together? For me it was kind of a lost paradise. Bajo tierra estarás, nunca de ti muerta. Because it was really an explosion, processing identities. It was life-changing to see older versions of myself. I'd never seen this before. Infernal mansión, y volando errarás, siempre sin luz, junto a los muertos, tú. Sembrava di vivere una società all'incontrario. Non era una chiesa e un'altra mafia. Un endroit où on se sentait en sécurité, un endroit qui était tendre. Pour être alto et proud, il faut que tu te dises que tu es safe. Pour être safe, il faut que tu I don't think there was a concept of what a lesbian was when we came here first. I Lesbians that have gone before us. We're not very good at sharing our history of how we got there. So interesting to me, Jazz. Yes. So as documentaries go, um, I think every lesbian will appreciate this mm -hmm. one. But, you know, because they, they intermix a bunch of uh, different quotes from Sappho, the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the poet. So that's always interesting how that goes together. The other thing about it that you may enjoy Enormous amount of nudity. Yeah! <laughs> Enormous. Do you know that jokingly I was going to say, what, they're naked? And then I was like, let her finish. I <laughs> can't even tell you when I was first watching it. I, you know, I started watching it on the airplane. And of course, I had to shut the laptop and we're going to watch something else <laughs> because there's no way I'm going to be sitting next to somebody who's looking. At and there's that. cities everywhere. Yeah. No, it's it's enormous because it's all about well, it's archival photos okay all right and so they you know they start with that and then they interview different people and um you know they had a particular area of the beach that was just basically women having a good old time on the beach no nothing on yeah but and doing whatever they wanted to it was oh, a I love that it was like party. a gay boy circuit party back it was, then it was that all of that but uh but anyway it's, it's interesting because you know they talk about how the times have changed mm -hmm. and how we don't you know back in the day you could not live openly and so here was an island where all these women would go mm -hmm. and they would just have uh you know and the, some were uh, sent there also like by their own families no no yeah was some people were like go place. it was a vacation place always yeah wow. people i mean maybe they were sent there like you know you're gonna have a good time there or <laughs> or go be be you there be you. maybe mm -hmm. but it was really a vacation place for women to be and then um in time we you know, had other places we could go and we were accepted everywhere and on and on. And so people stopped going mm. and it started dying and they realized that they were keeping this area thriving. And then of course, as usual things, you know, pick up again. And so, you know, it's a little bit of a resurgence again now. Mm. So it, it's a great doc. I want to go. You'll enjoy it. And, I want to go. You know, just... I mean, are there still naked les lesbians frolicking on the beach, like those pictures and video? You're going to have to go check that out. Okay. No, I want yeah. to. If I just show up naked and then everybody else has clothes, I'm going to be mad. You but they what? won't be, so it's okay. They'll take off their clothes when they see you. Yes, I love you that. Make That's what usually happens. So comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> like, look, I'm taking off my top. Don't you want to take yeah. off your top and too? And just everyone goes, and yeah, I see that happening. Mm. Have you ever been in a wet t-shirt contest? Nobody wants to see me in a wet t-shirt. I do. Contest. No, I it's... do. No, I... would it be funny if right I'm now, like, a whole with... big bucket of water just got thrown on her? Oh, look, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, let's do that next time. Third time, you guys over there just throw a bucket of water, bucket of water, and Jen's I'll wear coming white back next year. I'll wear white, and you wear white. Yeah, I let's love do that. that. But no, people, I, I, I'm a small chested woman, okay, but that's the best they, ones. No, yeah, well, okay, I'm, I love nipples. Oh, okay, well, I have two, 
Then we're so good. Ready. Then, yeah. then we're All good. Right, next time. Seriously. Lesbia yeah. comes out Saturday, April 27th at 515 at Regal Cinema South Beach, 1120 Lincoln Road on South Beach. All right. And it's also streaming April 29th through May 5th. Next up is The Queen of My Dreams. This is another one that I'm really interested in watching, okay? Um, so Azra, a queer Pakistani woman living in Toronto, is worlds apart from her conservative Muslim mother when her father suddenly dies. Azra finds herself on a Bollywood-inspired journey through memories, both real and imagined, from her mother's youth in Karachi to her own coming of age in rural Canada. <sighs> It's an MFA, mom. It's an acronym. Nobody says a legal word. I'm not nobody. What's wrong? But I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be You want to get married? I'm not the one you need to impress. Mark the Padma Tele Jannat. What I should be able to do whatever I want. To make me selfish, Kira. You do look just like your mother did. What do you think? I, I am, I'm a huge Bollywood fan, right? So, I mean, like, anything with a little bit of that kind of culture in, I'm in, you know? And, like, just by the description of, like, just, she's just gonna, you know, people are just gonna break into, like, Bollywood dance from one of her reminiscing moments. Like, right. I think that that's hysterical. Well, it's directed by Fazia Mirza, and she also, I believe, wrote it. And mm -hmm. do you know Fazia? Mm -hmm. So, Fazia did Signature Moon, mm -hmm. and she's done a bunch of other films. And that was so someone that I saw. Yeah, she's very well known in Toronto. She's in that whole uh, Toronto filmmaker scene. She's fantastic, very prolific. And uh, anyhow, it's it's interesting because she's Pakistani, um, but she was raised in Toronto. In, yeah, in Canada, yeah. Yeah, but you know, Pakistan's gone through some real changes in the decades. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I'm no scholar on Pakistani history, but um, I understand that she shot in Karachi. Mm. And, you know, Karachi now is under kind of like Sharia law and, you know, very heavily Islamic state. And back in the 60s and 70s, it wasn't. Mm. And so when she goes back in time trying to understand and reimagine her mother's youth uh, and why she is the way she is now and stuff, you actually see Karachi in the good old days where it was a little more almost like a like a Monte Carlo, mm, you know, wow. so it's it's really it's great to watch um you know fazia you know weaves a great story it's it's beautiful it's gorgeous and it's a real mother daughter you know coming together understanding each other's story yeah yeah and did, everybody can relate kind did of you on see that. the persian version i did see the persian it, it version. it has that kind of a Feel. vibe okay yeah so if you like that you're gonna like this i too. did it's love that very very good and i yeah. love that dynamic about like you we you know if it's not one thing it's your mother right <laughs> like that's what i those are words that i live by you know yeah. and so everybody can relate to that that it's like why is my mother this way right and then you take a look into their childhood or how they grew up and you're like oh shit you know we don't get to to, to do that yeah. you know and that explains so much as to why the reason they are who they are you are know you close to your mom we have we're working on it you know like um since i got sober i made it a point to clean up my side of the street per se jen you know and i am very well aware that my mom is in her 60s and we don't know what could happen any day you know i'm not saying that 60s are old by no stretch of the imagination but i do know that at this age a lot of folks around me start losing their parents their, their mm. parents start getting sick and stuff yeah. like that so i've tried my best to try to meet her where she's at does that make any sense you know where if she starts talking erratic about me being an abomination or going to jail i hang up your mother does that and she's in her 60s? Yeah, it's sad. It's unfortunate. Again, and we've come a That's long way. <laughs> and we've come a long way. <laughs> for a generation. And we've come a long way. Um, but um, it, it's still, I'm, I'm, it's very different when you stop thinking about how things make you feel and you start saying, you start seeing the bigger picture and yeah. saying, okay, I need to. And sort of how this movie implies a lot of the reasons that she is how she is is how she was brought up in yes. certain situations that she went into 
in her 20s that I didn't know about until later in life. Mm. And her own mother. You know, you have to think not just your mother, but her mother and how that impacted her. And there's actually a really great scene, which I won't, I don't want to ruin anything, but there's a great scene where the grandmother, you see her, the then and a now situation as they go back in time. And it's one of the most beautiful scenes Mm -hmm. of the film. And really gives uh, the daughter a, a feel for why mom is the way mom is. Oh, oh it's so good. Honestly, oh Fazia Mirza has got a good one there. Go yes. see it. For sure. Support her. Fazia, you kick yeah. an ass. The Queen oh, yeah. of My Dreams, Friday, April 26th, 6.45 p.m. at Regal Cinema, South Beach. Next up is What a Feeling. Director Kate Rohrer brings us this one. I think it's from Austria. Am I correct? Right? Yes. So life was going well for Marie until her husband in front of friends asked for a divorce. She subsequently spends the night drowning her sorrows in a lesbian bar where she encounters Fa, a charismatic heartbreaker who is busy running her business and caring for her elderly Iranian mother while avoiding being pinned down by any woman. Well, until now. Eigentlich ist meine Mutter furchtlos. Ich meine, sie ist alleine mit drei Kindern aus dem Iran geflüchtet. Das ist ja nicht ohne. Wo war euer Vater? Der ist nie aufgetaucht. Er hat es zwar immer wieder versprochen, aber Und ich glaube, tief drinnen hofft sie immer noch. Nach all den Jahren. Hoffnung gibt Kraft. Und wir hatten es nicht ganz einfach am Anfang in Wien. Meine Mutter hatte keinen Job, wir hatten kein Geld, wir konnten kein Deutsch und dann noch die berühmte Fremdenfreundlichkeit der Wiener. Mhm. Mit den Ausländern haben die Wiener es nicht so, oder? Ich meine, uns Piefke können ja auch nicht richtig bleiben. Ich glaube, ich werde immer zu österreichisch für die Iraner und zu iranisch für die Österreicher sein. Du hast lachen, das kann ich gut verstehen. Exciting! I love this film. And, you know, part of it is just just the idea that she's like 52 or 53. Ah, okay. You know, Uh their characters are in their early 50s, not settled down. Interesting. I mean, one of them is married. She's married to a man, and he breaks up with her in front of their friends. And she decides to go to a lesbian bar of all places. She drowns herself in her sorrows and stumbles into a lesbian bar. You know how they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it's, oh, it is such a good film. I, I have a hard time deciding my favorite of this festival, Mm, but that is right up there because I just, it was one of those films, almost like Carol, where I'm sitting there, like watching it, like, like what's next? It's, it's great. And Fa is such a great character. She's a little bit of a stud, but not really. Like she just in, in her own relationship with being out, but actually being closeted to her mother. Oh, wow. So it's, you know, and then. It, a lot of pieces uh, of the onion. Oh, my goodness. It's great. Like it. And, you know, I'm Austrian. I didn't my, know that. Well, my father is. So I'm half Austrian. So can you speak any? Of course, relate completely to the story. Oh, of course. It's like your I life. Know. Is that what, is that how you became a lesbian? You stumbled into a lesbian bar? I, I don't I, think so. I think you stumbled onto something else. What did I stumble on? A twat. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> That's not how it happened. I just had an it eye for It didn't happen ladies. for real? You didn't just trip and fall into a vagina? No, that's what happened to me. I was wearing these really high heels. I no, can actually see happened. that happening though, but you're so tall. You must have really come I down. must have like like yeah, like There's rolled a onto a and vagina. Then you, you rolled into it. Yes. Yeah. With my tongue out. I mean that takes some you expertise. Had to, so- to soften your landing. To, sure. That's that's it. Ugh. What a feeling Please. comes out Sunday, April twenty eighth at three forty five PM. That's our cl- that's our closing night, right? But it's that's not our closing the- night film, but it's our closing night. Yeah, so it's the same uh day as closing night, because the closing night film is a heavily boy oriented film mm-hmm. so we really have something nice for the ladies on closing night awesome this film it's so good oh, no, we have really to see film. it now yes. you got me excited about this so this comes out like i said april 28th 2024 3 45 p.m at silver spot cinemas downtown miami get your tickets at outshinefilm.com our next film backspot okay this is the lady yes. spotlight right so director dw watterson it comes to us from canada so riley how did canada become like spanish what do they say it's, like that canada 
it, it really hasn't quite come to a Spanish Yeah, language. right? Yeah, so it would yeah. be Canada. It would be more French. Just Canada. 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 Yeah. Canada. Yeah. Blame Canada. Canada. I'm also half Canadian. Really? Yeah, so everything that's... that I say is that, are you going to be that? Are yes. You... Okay, good. Whatever we'll you say. Out. We'll find out. All right. Me. You. Riley is given the chance to cheer with the all-star squad, Thunderhawks. With a competition looming, Riley must navigate her crippling anxiety, her relationship with her girlfriend, and her desperate need for approval from her new coach. One, three, five, seven, one. Great. One, three, five, seven, one. Three, five, How's it going? Good. Two more seconds. Yeah. Okay. One, three, five, seven, one. Okay. One, three, you ready? Five, seven, Just a sec. Four, five, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, three, five, seven, one, two, three. I like athlete, like athletic kind of movies that you folks bring bring each year because it's like you see the the plight, the anxiety, what it takes to be an athlete, you know, and you cover it across the board from cheerleading to soccer to football to whatever it is. Right. So, like, I love these kind of movies. Well, this year we have two, two uh, you know, athletic films. The other one is called Power Alley, and that's about volleyball. Mm. I played volleyball in school. What was your sport? Did uh, licking vagina. I, I am, know, listen, I'm the only lesbian that can't play a sport. Like, I'm really not athletic. I can put a freaking ba badass outfit together. And I could really paint your face like nobody else. But I really am bad at putting things together. I don't know my way around Home Depot. Like, I can't play softball. I, I'm not athletic. Do I look I don't like, like I know sports. my way, like, around all these things, too? But I do. Yeah, you I do. I don't know. You do I'm look like you do. You do I? Yes, you do. do I but look? why? Is there a stereotype that because you're not you're not butchy? I don't, you know. I but I, yeah. But you strike me like you would just know how to do a lot of things. I do. See? But I, thought, I thought we were all born that way. No, just you, bitch. Just you. I can't do shit. No, you can't. But all that's right. why I need women like you in my I'm life to do a, stuff for I'm me. I'm going to put a Rubik's Cube in your hand and watch you work your magic. And I know you can do it. <sighs> can I tell you that I had a Rubik's Cube and I took off all the stickers and just put them on the right side? See, that's so smart. Honey, it's just, I am, so I'm smart. not talented at shit. No, that's you why. were probably like very careful. I was. No, I knew exactly. See, I did it like that. It salió completamente your perfecto. your nails also. Yeah, they helped a lot. My nails, your nails. That's all we have to say. That's all we have to say. All we have to say. That's it. Back spot is the lady spotlight, and it's yes. Saturday, April 27th, 7.15 p.m. Is that the one that we're going to have an event to also? We're also no? having an event, and that, to talk a little bit more about back spot. Please. Oh, my God. Evan Rachel Wood. Yes, the coach. Oh my God, I can't Evan believe Rachel we didn't, I can't believe we didn't is, talk about that. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. How do we not love her no, from love her. True Blood yes. and from uh, Westworld? Mm -hmm. And and she's like a bisexual icon and all of that. Uh, and she's just sexy in this thing. Yes, she's, she, she's just, she plays she that chews role. She gum a lot. She's a lot of chewing gum. Um, but she's, you know, there's something about her being the coach and it talks about and I, th I do want to talk about this with you. Please. The, we, we are a little bit, I think we're about the same generation, more or less, you know. I, this is a lot or, of Botox. <laughs> this is a lot of Botox. But we, we, we didn't, you know, we weren't born with an iPad in our hands. No, we weren't. You know? Mm -mm. And we didn't, I mean, I, I know so many kids these days, they went through COVID in school. You know, and it's such a different experience to have had that. And, and this generation deals with anxiety in a mm -hmm. way that we never really de dealt with it. It's true. And yeah. those likes, social media, yes. all that, that, that has, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine going through school. Very, with very that, different. And, and this film really addresses that because you see these kids who are being pushed to do sports and, you know, she gets into this competition or this more competitive group and, she has to deal with the anxiety that she already has. Mm. And it's it's a film that really is very layered and does 
go into that in a, in a very meaningful way. Mm. And I really hope we can get some younger audience members to come see this. I think it will be very helpful. Or if you you know have a daughter or something, they'll really For enjoy sure. it. For sure. And also, it deals with how people kind of idolize their coaches. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, I, I really don't want to ruin anything, but there's a little bit of tension there that is you know, explored in an interesting way. And, and I just, I thought it was a fantastic film. And I'm glad we have an after party as well. So. Yeah, Gee, yeah. And, 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 and going back to what you said, I hope people bring their daughters and bring yes. uh, younger folks because it's true. I mean, anxiety it can be crippling and it's not something that we talk about so openly. You know, mm -hmm. we really should. And what these kids, especially LGBTQ plus kids, what they have to go through is something that I can't even imagine. And, and, and by, by what I saw, uh, you know, she really depends on the love of her girlfriend, you know, to like really get her through certain times yeah, you know and her family and her family but it's, you know it, it's really well done yeah i think you're gonna enjoy it very i think much. i am going and to, then too. the party afterwards is at the axel hotel nice. we were joking about it yesterday because the boys um are having a party on the like sky deck on the rooftop or something yeah and we're having a party in the basement in the toilet <laughs> Oh, no, it's in the lobby. It's in the lobby. No, they're having us at the reception table, so we have to check in people while we actually enjoy the party, which is fine because no, just, I love the Axel. You know what? It's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be fun. We're um, totally everyone joking. Everyone gets a free shirt. I it love says that. says Axel employee. And... <laughs> with your name tag yeah, on with it. the name tag. They'll probably name my, put my name wrong, and that's fine. But... No, I'm gonna, I'll spell it right. They always put an E, Jen. You know what? People do put an E. Always. Yeah. But again, I... I, I mean, I have a logo. There's no E there. Why do you continue? And people, my logo will be on the email and they'll still address the email. Faye, F-A-Y-E. When I was uh, sending around text messages to confirm this, mm -hmm. every time I would type it, it would autocorrect and put the E in. Just well, so that's you know. better because most of the autocorrect, it corrects Faye to gay, which I'm okay with. But how many email texts oh, or anything? I'll see yeah, like, the gay. I told you to. Right and I'm like, to each other. oh, Lord, have that's mercy. That's a good point. It is. It is. So, okay, back spot is yes. the spot, Lady Spotlight. And it's Saturday, April 27th, 7.15 at Silver Spot Cinemas. And then we're going to go right on down the, down the, what would you call the causeway to the Axel Hotel. All right. And we've got transportation, correct? Okay. So the, that film is at the Regal, I believe. Okay because it's the second weekend. So we are going to be... Um, oh, that was at the Regal. Thursday. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, we mm -hmm. start on Thursday at Silver Spot mm -hmm. on the 18th. And then we do basically seven days at Silver Spot. And then we shift over to the Regal Cinema on Lincoln Road. Perfect. And go from there. Oh, then so, you can just walk. Yeah, exactly. So it's you can walk or you can take a short Uber ride or whatever you want. Yeah. So very convenient. Oh, my God. No, that's yeah. going to be so much fun. And the women are going to come out. It's going to be... Amazing. Um, our last film that we just have to talk about because we're both super excited yes. about this film, okay? Um, and also just the fact that, you know, TDOV was a couple of weeks ago. I think it's awesome that we're also um, spotlighting this film. We wanted to talk about Elliot Page's film in the festival close to you, right? I thought you were going to ask me about all the silence. Oh my God. We'll talk about that after. So let's talk about Elliot Page. So everybody, of course, knows Ellen Page, who mm -hmm. famously uh, transitioned yes. and is now Elliot Page. This is his first film, his debut as an actor, and it is. It starts off with him, you know, with his shirt off, and it, you know, it's a very. He is very vulnerable in this film, mm. and it is fabulous. It's fabulous, and I think you know we were talking about how. I mean, this is him him coming home for the first time for his father's birthday party and facing all of his family at once. Wow. They have not seen him since before his transition. So he's comfortable with himself and he's asking them, you have to now be comfortable with me. Come along on this journey. Yeah, and, and of course everyone has a different opinion. Some people are much more you know, accepting than others and so on. And even it's interesting, sometimes people who are accepting are almost like too accepting. Mm. You know, it's like, is it really, he's, he's uncomfortable is it genuine? with that. Is like, this how they really, yeah. He doesn't really know how they really feel. He's trying so to figure on. out how to navigate all, every yes. single one of his relationships from the past. And because he used to be a lesbian in this character and also in real life. And also in real life, yeah. Um, he bumps into his old kind of like sort of girlfriend along the way and she's married a man now and so they want to get together and, and spend time together and it's like but there's this he doesn't you know she doesn't want to whatever it's 
beautiful. Mm. It's so well done. It feels very authentic. It's very relatable. And this is the thing that you and I were talking about a little bit because I find it, I'm not trans, but I find it very relatable to mm. watch a mm -hmm. film about a girl who becomes a guy because I feel like I know so many women who have. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and even if they haven't fully transitioned, you know, it's still a more masculine take on it mm -hmm. that we know so many completely and something else that we were talking about yesterday was a fact that i had read was that um 50 of women of trans women are actually lesbians so what a guys, high number guys who switch over to who female. had transitioned to be their true authentic self as women and, and maintain their sexual and maintain preference. their sexual preference of yes. other women yes you know and so and, essence, where, and where are those movies? <laughs> we, where need. Are those? we need. We need. Yes. We'll, we'll program them if you make them. Yes. So those are the movies we want to watch too. You're absolutely right. Yeah, we need some more of that because that's representation. And it's yep. the truth. Again, 50%, folks. I was blown away by that I can't fact. can't believe it. You know, um, so yeah, but where are you, lesbians? Why aren't you yeah. coming to me and, and saying, why aren't like, you making movies? Yeah, and why aren't you hitting on me? Aren't they? I mean, you well, said maybe, you knew. Well, you maybe I don't know, but maybe I know the are. ones I know aren't hitting on me. So maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I'm, do I smell bad? Smell me. You smell great. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So girls hit on yeah, me. Yeah, no, What's going it's, on? yeah. If you, especially, you know, if you were a guy mm -hmm. and now a girl, you should appreciate smelling a woman's perfume. Mm. Yeah. So that's something you don't lose. Well, I think that yeah. um, I look forward to seeing Elliot's uh, debut. I know that this was, a, you know, that this couldn't have been easy. But I mean, I it, what a brave soul yeah. also. also, you know, because it's kind of like doing like an opt about your own life, yes. you know? Yeah. No, it's it's brave. It's beautiful. Um, it's well acted. Um, the other thing is he was a producer for Backspot, too. Oh, so he actually has two films. I love the festival, that. So I didn't even know that. So he's he's very much. He has a production company called Page Boy. Oh, I love Page that. Page Boy Productions. I love so, that. Yeah, so, two, so it's great. Two representations of Elliot Page in this year's film festival. That's fantastic. So we have to talk about all the stars. Let me tell these people when Close to You is okay. coming out. Okay, so Close <laughs> to You comes out Thursday, April twenty fifth, nine forty five p.m. Your show. <laughs> no, it's okay, Mama. Next time we're just gonna switch over. <laughs> I'm just going to sit there. And That's a bad time. idea. I don't think so. I think it'd be great. I'll take off my top. Okay. April 25th, 9.45 p.m. Regal Sobe, right? This yes. is going to be at the Regal South Beach and it's going to be streaming April 29th through May 5th. And um, let me talk about that real quick. Outshine at home. Okay. Plenty of people. Sometimes you can't get out and mm -hmm. go join us for the parties and for the events and all that kind of stuff. Right. It's okay with that. Pay, pay one price and you'll be able to see the films from the comfort of your own home. Yes. Yeah, you can. Okay. But we like to see you out. No, I it's listen. It's like such a good community thing. But yes, of course. But there's must something. Stay at no, home. but there's something about the theater. There's something about the you know, the Silver Spot has great popcorn. But there's something about bad popcorn and you know, just being in a yeah. dark theater and you know, like just and hearing I, you know. each other laugh at the same yes. things, crying at the yeah, same, clapping things, at the same thing. You know, seeing each other in the theater before the movie starts, making jokes with each other. Yes, yeah. sitting, not sitting next Having to people you don't like. Afterwards, throwing oh, yeah. popcorn at people you don't running like and then into, blaming it on the person next to you. Running into ex-girlfriends, oh, running into ex, you know, <laughs> so a lot to of me. stuff that, oh. that you don't get that experience just sitting at home. Yes, <laughs> you don't. No, <laughs> oh, Lord, and all my that. exes love your damn movies. Like, I've never not run into somebody I boinked at one of your events, I, just to let you know. I have a list of them and I invite them every time. You invite my girls. I know Always. you do. Always. All just, my exes. I have, I'm, they're on Were a you part of Fair Watch? Yes, you, they're on a group chat. Yes. Damn WhatsApp, I swear to God. Oh my God. Okay, let's talk about Todo, uh, todo el Silencio, sí. all the silence. All right, tell me about that. Okay, so this film, remember how I said that I like have my favorites? Mm -hmm. So, What a Feeling and this one are probably my two favorites. Your two ones, okay. Because if you liked Coda, um, you know, this is also about uh, deaf. Um, so Coda is um, a son or a daughter of someone who's child deaf, right? Child deaf adult. Okay. That's what Coda stands okay. for. And also just to go back to Elliot Page's film, um, the girl that he's interested in or that, that was his previous interest uh, is also deaf. Oh, wow. Interesting okay. choice, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. Okay. Yeah, kind of. I, I'm not really sure how it was that necessary to the story, but it's an interesting choice and it, it works and very, it works. very well. Okay. Yeah, so it's, right. it's a great, a great show. Um, but back to this film. So she has a real love for sign language and her parents are deaf. Miriam is the name of the, the main actor or the character. And, um, her girlfriend is deaf, but she can hear. 
Okay. And she's an actress. Okay. And she starts losing her hearing. Mm. And you can know, I mean, you know this, the vocal cues are very important in acting. You know, of you course. hear the person say their line and then you know that your line comes in, things like that. Like she starts not being able to do that. And it takes you through a journey of what people go through as they're losing their hearing. And if you have any parents or family members who are starting to lose their hearing, um, they go through the same thing, but slower. Mm. It happens in a little more rapid uh, pro progression in this case because she does have, I mean, deafness is hereditary. Oh my goodness, I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow, I'm learning a lot. So, and so what, okay, um, by the trailer, by what I understood, it wasn't Miriam, it was the actress who, I guess uh, she had just gone through life by like reading lips and stuff like that. Like she didn't know about sign languaging herself. Um, so her girlfriend, her girlfriend who's deaf, um, only reads lips. She refuses to sign. Wow. Okay. Because that's a whole other subculture that we're really not used is. to seeing, you and know? And they're surrounded with friends. You know, but if you can, you know, you don't, if you can read lips, you don't have to sign. Yeah. You know, it's, so it's a very different thing. You know, the other thing I heard the other day, which surprised me is that sign language is different in every language. You'd think it would be more universal, right? Yeah. Yeah. But it's different. They say in every language. Oh. Not that I know sign language. No, me neither. I just know how to do my, my, I know how to go. Bye. I know this one. <laughs> That's good. I know this one. <laughs> This is my That's favorite, my... and it gets me out of a lot of stuff. Like, and it's universal. It works in France. We... It works in Greece. It, you know, it worked am... in Rome. I'm going to do just a general apology on behalf <laughs> of the film festival. We are horrible human beings, and we, but we love, we love. Uh, that we have diversity and well, that we have these. And that's um, what I wanted to explain. That's what I wanted to, that's what I wanted us. to say. Like, you know, um, you know, uh, last year I was so happy that you folks had done the movie Kokomo, right? Yes. And, uh, the, the black trans representation was everything. And it was heartbreaking when one of the stars passed away soon right after before, we did the premiere. Like, before the premiere. Oh my God, before the premiere. Yes, because then, yeah, I remember. Then we did the vigil. Uh, then we did the vigil and the organizations were a part of it. I remember that. I'm getting chills. I, you yeah. know, and I just remember the year before, you saying something to the effect like, you know, we want to get more black and brown inclusivity, yes. you know, and then last year we had this one of my, one of a couple movies, by the way. And then this year we have, you know, a no dialogue. We have a sign language film. This is inclusivity. This is our community, yeah. Jen. You know, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that we deal with and struggle with is on the inside anxiety, right? These are things that yeah. are, you just can't see by looking at people. And I give the Outshine Film Festival such kudos for seeing that and including that because that's part of our community. It, it is. But, you know, we 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 show what we're given. You know, we're not the ones making the films. We get the films and... But you get we, a lot of films, Jen. Please give lot. yourselves a lot more no, credit, Mama. We really try to whittle them down because it's a combination of trying to really focus on showing the representation mm -hmm. and also finding the content that's really watchable and good for people too. So, you know, we have to keep doing these festivals because festivals allow the filmmakers to get the notoriety and the press to be able to go out and make more films. And so it's it feeds into itself. And so the more uh, filmmakers can get out there and create beautiful films, the more we want to show them and vice versa. So. Yes, yes. You know, yeah. so be a part of the Miami, uh, uh, be a part of the Outshine Film Festival this time around for the Miami edition. All right. They've got so much stuff. Um, you know, there's always events and fun things attached to many of these nights, like the Spotlight film, women's film. We've got the men's spotlight. We've got, you know, the Spanish spotlights. Look it up at Outshine Film and find out what you want to go to and go to all of it because it's just all a lot of fun, you know? Um, so I've, I, I, you kind of told me which one is your favorite, right? Yeah, well, for, I, I mean, gave you a two, couple. Yeah. two, right? And I mean, what are, you, what are you most excited? Now I don't know because I initially wanted to see Gondola and I wanted to see Lesbia, but now after talking to you, like I, I've got to see. I have to see all the silence. I've got to see all the silence. I, I yeah. really, oh, and we really have a party after that too. So that's going to be women and men. We're doing a Latin night, which is a brand new thing that Steve came up with, Steve and Roberto, and we're going to have four films that evening, all Latin. Um, all the silence is Mexican. Mm. And then after that, we're going to have a Latin theme party. Oh, I love that. And this is at the uh, Silver Spot. So it's right there. 
in what we call our Silver Spot Lounge. Mm. So it will be great. I love that. It's going to yeah. be a whole lot of fun. Thank you so much to everyone at, over at Outshine Film. Thank you to Joe and Steve, Mark Gilbert, and Al Ferguson for making this all happen. We honestly love Outshine Film. Um, anything that we can do to help, you know that I am here. I want you back in bed next year for, wait, no, this year. You're yeah, going to be back do, in bed this year for Fort Lauderdale edition. I'm, you can't get away from me, girl. I'm ready to jump into bed with you anytime you ask. Did you hear her say that? Can you say it slower? Anytime they asks me to come to bed, I run, not walk. <laughs> to her bed. <laughs> Sorry, I'm taking all that in. Jennifer Chris, board director uh -huh. of Outshine Film Festival Miami. Outshine Film Festival is April, April 18th through the 28th. Outshinefilm.com. Get your tickets today and we will see you at the Queer Movies. Thank you, Jen. I adore you, Mama. Mwah. We'll be right back.